Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to begin season five of the North American ESL Pro League. I'm joined once again by Days. Days, welcome back to the casting desk. How was your time off? It was good, Blue. I got a lot done. Did you? But yeah. The whole time I was, you know, not casting, I was looking forward to being back by your side. Oh, thanks. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are getting ready to jump into this first match. Now, Cloud9 versus Rush, probably a, a bit of a one-sided affair to start off uh, the season here. What do you think? Well, I mean, Cloud9 is definitely, definitely a favorite, but it is CSGO, and anything can happen, Blue. Um, Rush has a lot of individual players that can go off. At that. I mean, we've seen Poyo, you know, at the Mountain Dew League have huge rounds and things like that, so, so nothing's out of the realm of possibility. Um, I think, you know, Rush could, could definitely take this one if they, they really pull it together, especially on a map like Cobble where there's a lot of upsets, Blue. Well, guys, it is time to jump into it. The first map here today is going to be Cobblestone. Rush will be starting off on the T side with Cloud9 on the CT side, and immediately Rush go for the usual deployment into the B bomb site. 3-2 split on Broken Wall and in drop, but already being shut down by Cloud9. Two kills for them, no responses at all until just now, and Little Man picks up a kill outside of drop. But even then, he'll be quickly traded off, and Vert is left standing in a 1v4, basically in an impossible situation. It will be Cloud9 that take the first round of the season. Yeah, and they take it very, very cleanly. Uh, what, what Rush did there is they had a good initial execution to get out, but they weren't able to find any clean gun battles, you know, right when they got out. And Cloud9 played a very passive setup with 4B at the start of the round. Um, so there was no follow-up flashbangs to, to really take the fight to C9 after they initially get out, and that's where it really fell apart. Um, so they're able to just step back, hit, hit a lot of, you know, nice just USP one taps, and now they basically go for a full save. Um, just, you know, a couple P250s and, and a flashbang, no armor or anything like that. So it should be an easy cleanup for Cloud9. Skadoodle so actually just going to be dodging out of trouble area there as he nade finishes off Toy I think he connects the shot, automatic and trial, they're rolling in, and there's those UMPs cleaning up shop with the exception of Blade trading out that one kill. Those UMPs coming in we've seen them more and more recently and you know some people claiming they're like overpowered what what are, what are your thoughts on the matter oh i mean that they're ridiculous when you take into account the running accuracy um how, we, how good the armor penetration is and, and the cost and the, and the kill reward it's it really is pretty imbalanced um having said that sometimes you get in a little bit of trouble where you just ump like a bit too much and you buy too much but i, I don't think there's any reason to buy like a famas or anything like that i think you should always just just ump get armor and nades Again, into the third round. It's another pretty much full save here. Automatic, though, overstays with that spray inside of the suicide steps here, but it will do serve the purpose of baiting a few of these players inside of the halls now, where Skadoodle can pick two, basically three of them off. Little Man's not going to be surviving for very long after that encounter, and again, it comes down to one after they've only been able to trade out one player. Blade trying to do a 1v4, trying to basically pick up as much damage as he can against the Cloud9 roster, but with these last two rounds only yielding one kill against Cloud9, they're going to be looking good to have a semi-solid bank heading into that first gun round. Yeah, and, and they're just going to chase him, pinch him in, and, and get that kill pretty easily. So they're going to have three umps, uh, an M4, and maybe like an op. And the, the thing about cloud Nine setup that you're going to want to watch for is watch how Automatic actually plays this A site. He plays it very, very intelligently. He plays it very smart. Um, he, he never gets caught off guard. You know, he never gets just killed right off the bat without getting info and delaying them and things of that nature. So I think he's he's a really good player to watch. Him and Flusha play that A site very, very well. As Cloud9 is getting aggressive here at long. Automatic skadoodle and, and a third player as well. Little man first up to bat here on the long position, but as mentioned previously, Automatic sits up front and ready to destroy this as they do push their way in. He's going to go up front, but no, it comes in a little bit too quickly for his own taste here. And not only that too, but Little Man with a nice swing, he's going to get one, and Pollo chimes in for his second against Skadoodle. It's all been cleared out, and now Shroud and Stewie have to go for a rushed rotation over here to the A-bomb site. They'll arrive here, but still, the odds are certainly stacked against them, and Shroud's not even going to be able to pick up a kill at all here. It's down to Stewie. He'll just roll right out, pick up the one kill, trying to retreat, but the Molotov goes inside. It will not let him go anywhere, and Blade will get the last kill as Rush pummel their way through the first gun round and are up on the scoreboard now. Yeah, and that was a great setup by Cloud9. It was a calculated risk by them. They read the situation very, very well, but... You know, Rush just goes in and, and they, they get the trade kills necessary. Cloud9 wasn't really set up properly like they should have been. Um, Automatic kind of out on his own. They all fought, you know, individually. But if all three were kind of there peeking off of each other, maybe the guy towards the, the haystack takes contact and then the other two guys swing. It's a completely different round. Um, but an inter interesting read by Cloud9 there to, you know, send three towards the A off the bat. 
Well, now we have Scudido playing things a little bit further back. No support for him in this situation. If he misses, he's got to run away as there is no one that is able to cover him on the retreat. He goes back and again, takes up a new position, but this time it's going to end him a kill. He is traded down to 38 HP as a result of that, but again, is still safe for now and is going to be able to fall back to the bomb site. Rush, however, will take control of the mid connector and the long A areas, so they can execute here if they want to, but with a minute and 15 left on the clock, that would be very obvious. It's more than likely going to hold back here and run the timer down a bit. Potential to rotate is still alive too, so we've yet to see what exactly they're going to plan to do off of this, uh, this first initial push. Yeah, and those are the mistakes, though, that you just cannot do if you're Rush against these really, really good teams. Like, you get away with it once, once Scudido missed that first initial shot, but then you still continue even knowing that he's opting there to try to, like, you know, just straight peek him while he's opting that long A corridor. Um, if you watch a team like Navi or something like that, they're definitely going to take it a lot more systematically. They're going to smoke that in there after they push him off initially and, you know, take the round that way, you know, just more methodically, more systematically. And... If that's how they're going to play it, then Skadoodle should have just a field day getting clean picks left and right, making it 4v5 all day. Well, Cloud9 did not fully bot on the rotation. In fact, they've been able to read that it's going back over here towards the B bomb site. One for one first to drop, but Stewie, again, misreads the peak. It allows a little man to push his way back out there. He's going to be able to pick up the control of the bomb site here. It will still be a 3v3, and Shroud's moving in really quickly. He's going to be able to find the bomb planter. Bomb doesn't even go down. They've only got 12 seconds left, and they still need to find a plan at some point here. Toy sneaks in there, is able to retrieve it. He will get this on the ground, but he's being flanked out. He doesn't realize it. Automatic picks up one. Little man with the trade. He's got a headshot angle against the second player here, but he's very low himself. Down at 22 HP, still trying to hold himself back from this position. But now it gets a little bit tense here, as they know exactly where he's at, and he hasn't accounted for Skadoodle wrapping on the right side yet. And in fact, he's going to be the one to grab the kill, as Cloud9 traded out and go up 4-1. to one. Yeah, four to one. That puts Russia's economy a little bit lower than than they probably like to see. We'll see if they decide to force buy or save here. Getting two killed or only having two alive though for Cloud Nine on that round win um, could definitely, you know, maybe they they do force buy, and uh, looks like they will. They actually have a pretty strong buy. They have you know a few AKs. They even have an op. So so they're good on money right now. And this round is going to be very very important because Cloud Nine. If they lose this, their money's going to be in, in shambles. We have seen some success still with Rush, at least on their initial pushes with Cloud9 not being ready for the amount of aggression we've seen here so far. So it looks like they are going to be taking a note away from that this time, however, as they just go for a stack mainly outside of the broken wall approach and drop your fairly standard B opener. Little Man, however, moves in to drop very quickly. There isn't really anybody covering it right now. As the Molotov goes out again, Little Man trying to just block access, but that's going to be destroyed by a smoke. As the rest of team waits to get in position, they have a second man ready to go down to drop two. And meanwhile, on the CT side, automatic watches outside of the window there to prevent them from splitting A, which they won't be doing. The rest of Rush, again, they're really just waiting for them to get some progress on Broken Wall, where Little Man can safely push out. But Molotov's all inside. There's nowhere safe for him to go. He's got to go to this window position. It's the only safe corner in the room, and Automatic's looking for him, but he can't actually seem to find him. He's still safe in this corner, to a relative sense anyway, at 28 HP, but he's kept himself alive, and now he's going to get pushed by three different players. They get that, but they left the Broken Wall exposed, so Stewie's got to go huge here. One for him, two, three, and four! Stewie destroys the entire push, and it's another big round for Cloud9. Yeah, that round was huge. You see Cloud9, even though Lil Man got down drop and it split the Cloud9 positioning up, there was only one person A. Um, they retake drop control. Uh, nobody's there to support Lil Man at all from up top. Uh, you know, he had support because he recognized that they were retaking drop with those, you know, Molotovs and stuff like that. Um, but nobody was up top to support him. Stewie was just an insane spray transfer, though. That's, that's really what he does best. He's probably, like, one of the best in the game at, game at you know, spray transfers. And again, they're going towards A on their eco rounds, trying to catch Skidoodle off guard, but it's not working. You know, Automatic's always there to pack him up. And now, you know, just two Glocks. Easy, easy for Cloud9. Automatic hiding out here. He does not realize the player pushing directly underneath him, but somebody jumps up on top of Pollo and ends up getting that last kill as well. So a 4K on the round for Automatic, and it's yet another one for Cloud9 as we come off of Rush's eco there. They should be able to invest into this one, uh, but so far gun rounds have been rather unsuccessful, and now this is going to take us into what I believe is going to be Rush's first tactical pause. Yeah, and, and this is something that they need right now because they have a clean slate right now. Cloud9 has been predicting every single thing they've done. Right, even the round they won, um, you know, Cloud9 had three there at, at long A, and essentially, I mean, they just didn't trade correctly, right? But it definitely could have been a Cloud9 win. They just weren't set up properly. Um, but they're reading Rush and what they're doing just so, so well. You see when they took drop control, they, they hit drop together, retook it, and they're just making Rush so uncomfortable, reading what they're doing, and they're really like just one step ahead at every opportunity right now. So Rush needs to start mixing it up, stop being so predictable, and you know, 
you know, stop giving Cloud9 the upper hand just at the start of the round. The round just starts blue, and Cloud9 already is in position to win it so far in this game. Now Cloud9 possibly going to get a little bit aggressive here, too. Look like they were going for a boost up inside of the drop room there to see if they can catch anybody early on in the round. Won't be seeing anyone, I don't believe, anyway. We can see the HE grenades going in, so they're actually trying to see if they can get some early damage onto the players inside of it, but that's a bit of a risky boost. Thankfully, Skadoodle misses the shot, and he'll just promptly back out. But we do see the aggression coming in over here towards Long A, but look at Automatic playing around the smoke there. Gets a one-for-one. One. Also does do decent damage to Little Man, however, and that is going to cause some more hesitation on the rush side. They fall back. They don't decide to push in through that smoke. And now the drop players are still investigating over here, too. They'll start to move in and see if they can get control here, as potentially we have the bomb player and the other one that was with him over towards the A long position, moving back into the halls to try and turn this into a B hit. Yeah, and it looks like they are down drop and maybe going to fake B and then go towards A as two players are going towards A with the bomb. They can split the um, window, too. Yeah, nothing rotated off of B, and they are in position to get split right now. As now you do have Blade remaining inside. The second player does get boosted back up and is going to regroup with these other two back over here at Long. Toy moving in. The reinforcements from Cloud9 still sit essentially 2-2, depending on if Blade can get this kill inside of the site connector itself. It's a bit of a tense battle that may happen there, but again, the timing on that is perfect. The second they were going to push themselves out of A-Long, the player over here in the alleyway does throw out the Molotov. You've got the op sitting back on site, but it's going to re -peaks, unfortunately, too aggressively. Now nothing sitting in the alleyway. He gets flashbang. He's got to be careful of Toy. He's able to hold back long enough, though, to pick up the kill, and Shroud seems to have handled the rest back over there by the connector. It's another one for Cloud9, as they are now 7-1 to in the lead. Yeah, and the reason Cloud9 was actually so well set up there, Blue, is because I know we weren't able to see it, you know, on the stream was that Stewie was aggressive upper B. He was on the stairs. So he has the entire vision of the B halls, and then it's very easy to watch E box there as well. So he has B side of drop, right? And he has upper B, very deep vision on both sides. So all of a sudden, you can play two towards A. You can send that drop player more towards A because Stewie has that on lock and he has deep positioning there. Um, so he essentially, I know it's weird that you say, well, this guy didn't even get a kill, but he, but I'm saying, you know, Days is saying he won the round, but just that information that he gave his team was huge. Well, the guys from Rush do try to rush their way inside of the drop room and generally over here into the B-bomb site, but it doesn't really work out. One kill from Polio is the only one they've been able to pick up this time around, and Toy's not going to last very long either. Another one where it's quickly shut down. These Ecos from Rush are just not impacting at all. So Cloud9 continues to not only rack themselves up on the scoreboard, but their money continues to grow quite confidently too. The only one that's really low right now is nothing at 3.7k, and on the other end of it, Shroud's sitting at $11,000 in the bank right now. Yeah, and it's going to be very difficult for Rush to do anything and execute very, very quickly um, just because of the utility that Cloud9 has. Almost certainly they're going to, you know, just pre-nade drop, pre-molly it, pre-nade, pre-molly B. So it's going to be really tough for them to get anything going very, very early on. And Cloud9 with this double op setup, you know, now all of a sudden it's tough to do anything early. But then whenever you take your time, you have Skadoodle actively looking for picks. You have Stewie actively looking for picks. It becomes very, very difficult. The rotations are going to be a little bit far off this time, however, from Cena, as they're both fully committed over towards A. Three in the B site, though. But one for two. Now two for two as Shrot picks up another kill from back over here behind the tree boost spot. He's waiting for another one to peek, but misses the spray. So Toy is going to capitalize on that. More have started to arrive, though, as they wrap back in. Skadoodle first up to bat, and they are sending Automatic in to do a flank over towards the Broken Wall platform. Rush will take control. They're just now going for the plant, but they're being given a lot of time to securely put themselves into post plants as they do have that smoke covering the cross, which Skadoodle won't be able to punish. But he's also waiting at this angle if someone like Blade goes for that peak on the right side. He will oblige it. Most of them, however, seem to be paying attention for that flank right now, or potentially for a movement in through the drop room as well. Virtus, as he holds it, sits back and waits as Cloud9 have yet to make a sound. He hasn't spotted the play just yet, but Automatic needs to strike here soon. Both have kit, so they have a decent amount of time to play with, but nice to sunk by Virtus. He's going to be able to grab the immediate kill after being flashed out by Automatic, and unfortunately Skadoodle does not meet a mark either. Toy is going to shut him down, and it's a good hold in the post plan for Rush. Yeah, and that was a good job by them. You, you see what they did there at B. They made sure that no early aggression could happen from Stewie. They molotov the stairs, they flashed over, and they... They, they made it so he couldn't have that early pressure. And then after that, you know, they're able to trade kill with him on statue. And, and as soon as you trade kill with that other guy, be any type of 3v3 post plant situation or 3v2, um, and you have the B site, is going to be extremely advantageous for the T's. So now, you know, they're going for a little bit of a different play. They flash through the smoke, actually. And 
do a really nice job of clearing out Skadoodle. And now we see, we'll see if they do the same mistake. They actually run into his off, he misses, and they're able to headshot him. So now Ace Sight is very, very vulnerable, Automatic has to fall back, and he's going to have to play this one and try to delay as much as possible. He was able to take down one before going down, but Automatic's going to be forced out because of the Molotov. However, he doesn't move forward enough, so it's going to burn him down after he also picks up a kill. We're still even, we're still 3v3, but Cloud9 have been smoked and mollied outside of the site. They're not really going to be able to move back in. Stewie kind of has an angle to work with here, but it's only in that very, very tight tight corner because of an awkward position on the smoke. As the Molotov fades, though, he's going to jump back in, but he fails to account with a close broken wall there. Polio is just going to take him right out of the picture. You have a flank coming in from Shrouded. This is where massive damage can be done, as nobody was watching out for that. A second player sits down below on the ramp that they will need to be cautious of when they move back in, especially back over there by that shed position. The other one sits on the site, but now the ramp player has struck. That's Blade picking up the kill onto nothing. Shroud's trying to wrap around it here, but Blade's doing a great job just wasting time. And when finally push comes to shove, he peeks right out and grabs the instant headshot to shut down Shroud. Yeah, eight to three now, and, and they picked up two rounds in a row. Uh, Stewie is able to kill Toy out on that lurk, and, and that lurk, even though Toy didn't get that kill, we saw how late their rotation was. Um, it took them a very, very long time to, to give Automatic any type of support, so he got Molotov out, he had to just go one for one, and now Cloud9, if they lose this round, they should be on a save, so Rush showing really good signs of life right now, Blue, um, after going down eight to one. The hope he can keep it that way as Cloud9 are finally starting to run out of cash, it seems. The downgrade starting to show. They are going to be pretty much at the end of their rope this time around, but building up the losing bonus, we'll see how it affects them as they go into the next round here. Rush, however, back to the basics in terms of these B pushes here. A fairly standard play into the site. They look for Stewie first off. He fails to get any of the kills onto these players. Now nothing. Boosted up on top of the tree position. Skadoodle and Shroud have thankfully been able to trade out the kills quite nicely. But now, drop positions coming back in as Shroud and Skadoodle trade out two more frags. It's down to Virtus. And unfortunately, he's in a very held back position. So now that he's been pushed out, this is going to be essentially impossible. Unless he comes out with some crazy shots to push him back into the site. Only this too, but he's working against a flight that's slowly working in from his backside here. He'll make the move and even gets tagged on his way, crossing that smoke. Everyone from Cloud9 hiding in a really safe position. One player sitting back over there behind the tree spot, that's Shroud. Scooby Doodle was able to tag him from the right a moments before, but now he's not even testing it. He's just sitting back and waiting. Like I said, like I mentioned previously, that flag's moving in, but nobody's accounting for the fact that he's actually pushed out to the steps right now. So he is free reign. He's spotted this second player. He's going to wait till he gets the position on the tree guy, though. So there we go. First pick up for him. He tries to go for the second. He's not able to find it. And Shroud will trade it out, but amazing that he was allowed to get that far into the site without being spotted. Yeah, that was pretty crazy on his part, just to, just to get in that position to, to almost have a chance of winning the round, because I'm sure he knew the other player was flanking. And even though they're able to get that, that entry onto Stewie, there's really not much of a follow-up, right? They're, the guy from drop is a little bit late on it. Um, they still had four towards B, automatic was towards that drop, I, I believe, as well. Um, but there's no follow-up after that initial trade. You know, there's no, like, Molotovs on the trees. There's no smokes to hold off the rotates at all. And so, again, we kind of saw it on the pistol round, Blue, where the, the initial execution kind of worked out well, even though they didn't really get many kills on the pistol, but they put themselves out there and into position. But that secondary follow-up wasn't there. So it seems like for Rush, the plan initially is kind of working, but then the follow-up just really isn't there to enable, to, to, to enable them to win any rounds. Well, Rush are back onto an eco round now, and the track record for these has not been great, to say the least, especially now that Cloud9 is really back in control of things. Splitting them players, splitting their players up, but with the majority of them, uh, working their way up through the ramp now. They've got one more on long and one guy going to late deploy probably over here towards drop. They know it's coming though as it's already been spotted. Automatic peeking his way back out, swinging over and getting two more kills before finally being put down by Polio again. However, as we have seen Blade jump in from the drop position, they're slowly hunting him down. They'll catch out that position, and while well, Polio unfortunately hasn't actually made a lot of progress in terms of getting this bomb up to the site, he's still stuck in the corner outside of long, and Claude Nine are just waiting for him to peek. Yeah, they are. He, he has no chance of winning this round. They know exactly where he is. Um, he does have head armor, though. So he's spotted out here. He'll do about half of the damage over here on Escadudo before finally being put down by the USP. Trading out at least one more kill to try and keep the money a little bit low, but as we approach the last couple rounds of the half, the economy is not really going to be as important anymore. Yeah, and this was another beautiful spray chance for, by Automatic. We saw one earlier from Stewie. Um, but, but back to what I was saying, Blue, you know, when you do those initial executions where you're going off a pop flash, you could actually, like, set up smokes at B, you know, maybe a Molotov on this tree where, where nothing was, and kind of execute at the same time. As long as you time it properly, there's really no delay. Skadoodle gets an early pick on Pollo. We've seen them consistently put pressure A-holes right away, and that time they get caught out for it. And this is something you see a lot of people along A do. Automatic cannot be killed here. You could just spot 
right away and then pop a smoke down and there's really no risk in that right as long as you have somebody spotting middle so that you can't get flanked from danger you essentially have free vision of long a blue we see flush do that time and time again i think he does that he literally does that like 15 rounds in a row because there's no counter to it mm -hmm. So off of that, they fall back and they do get the spot on it. But the real story is happening over here inside of the Broken Wall push where Stewie's been allowed to go all the way into the halls and he's about to get a back flank on a blade. Potentially could knife. Let's see. No, he's just going to take the easy kill with the UMP there as he moves in. He will uh, he'll shut down blade. And we're already looking at just three players left alive for Rush with the majority of them being set up. Again, properly reading where exactly Rush are going to take this push towards. They have players ready for it. It's automatic on ramp. He's killed the hit here. They already knew just moments ago, right at the beginning of the round, that there was going to be presence at long. It'll be a bit of a battle here, but it's down to one now. Little Man after Virtus takes down Shroud and Skadoodle hits the shot immediately as Little Man exits the alleyway. Yeah, and that's just, it's just never going to work out for you when it's a 3v5, Stewie pushed B, so he knows nobody's drop, he knows nobody's B, you're going into four people on that A site, you know, they got crossfires going, and you're just, you're never going to succeed in that position. Let's do it with a nice initial shot here, too. So this takes us down onto the forced up last round investment from Rush, which isn't going to be the greatest. Two Tech Nines. Three uh, three SMGs to play with here. A fairly normal amount of utility, but look at Skadoodle again, playing it aggressively here. He definitely spotted the players moving in. There's nothing at A long, so he actually is safe to sit up here. And even if there was, he's got a player supporting him. Legs, another one. That's Poyo down to 11 HP. Now they're still shuffling through. They're going to try to brute force this, but now look, automatic hides in a corner. He's going to find one. He's waiting for more, specifically over there by the ramp, because the reinforcements are a little bit weak from that position. But the pop flash goes inside. He's going to swing right through. He did great damage. There's one. Unfortunately, he has trouble finding the other two. So a trade will come in from Polio, but this distraction that he has caused, along with even getting the one-for-one -one trade, has now brought it down to a situation where if they go forward onto this A-bomb site, Cloud9 are going to be ready. If they rotate to B, Cloud9 are going to be ready. And the last two are already heavily lit as well. Polio is at 11, from I think getting legged by Skadoodle earlier, and Virtus got brought down to 76. And they're basically stuck here inside of the suicide steps right now. Yep, they're stuck. One has an ump, one has 11 HP. So it's looking pretty grim for uh, the Rush guys um, as they're just sitting in danger waiting to see if anybody pushes them, but that's not going to happen. So now they're going to have to rely on an initial entry. I would probably give the AK to Virtus so that he could try to enter. It's pretty tough to do it with 11 HP, but you know we'll, we'll see what happens. They'll move themselves in and immediately we do have, I think it's going to be Skadoodle waiting over here. Right by the cannons. They know he's up close. Shroud though chiming in. And he's going to want that last kill as well. He'll get it. And it is a smooth first half for Cloud9. 13, or apologies, 12 to 3, excuse me, uh, is going to be the first half score here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see in just a few moments here if Rush will be able to bring it back. If not, well, it could be a quick first map. So stick around for the second half coming up in just a little bit. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Logitech G, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, and ESEA. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, here once again live with the inaugural evening of Season 5 here at the ESL Pro League. Uh, we just witnessed Cloud9 have a dominating first half in their first match here. They're taking on Rush, one of the new move-up squads that came in from Premier slash the Mountain Dew League in the last season. Uh, and so far, all, Rush is off to a bit of a slow start here, unfortunately only being able to rack up three rounds in the first half. But we do immediately go into the pistol round here now, where Cloud9 is now on the T side. And we'll, we'll see. What is it? Actually, apologies, no, it isn't live yet, so excuse me on that one. We should be getting started in just a moment here. Yeah, talk about being just thrown to the Lions during your first, you know, move-up match, playing against the uh, the reigning champs. 
Cloud Nine. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit, a little bit more struggling uh, in the off season, I guess you could say, like going and not qualifying for the major after they had that victory and whatnot. So the expectations for them are kind of lowered a little bit, but still in the off season, of course, having plenty of time to recover themselves and hopefully get that strength back a little bit now coming into the season and certainly having a match against Rush. Well, just going to give them a nice gradual start into the season this time around. Yeah, and one of the things that you have a huge advantage going into the season if you're Cloud9 is having a roster that already knows how to play together, you know, has all their maps and the basics kind of down, you know, for their CT sides and, and their T sides. They know, you know, what everybody's job is when it comes to defaulting and stuff like that. And a lot of these teams with roster changes, it takes time to get, you know, used to each other. Um, sometimes you get that new team smell where you're really good for that first week, but that usually wears off after that. And then you kind of have to, you know, get back to the grindstone and, and, you know, work these things out. And Cloud9 already has that done. And that's one of the reasons I picked them, to, you know, to be either the first or second seed again. Um, you know, teams that play a lot have roster, you know, you know, not non-roster issues. The Cloud9 just groups up towards B. It's going to be a simple smoke and a double flash for Skadoodle to, to, to get them out, you know, Stewie out there. And Russia, a three down drop. Russia being fairly passive about this, not moving in, but they don't realize that they're being flanked over there. Back over there behind the statue. It's two for one to start us off. Little Man found a single trade, but that seems so far to be it. Toy and Virtus don't really have a hope in the world now, especially just Toy stuck in a smoke. You can hear those shots going off, but he can't seem to find his way out of the smoke as he's hiding in the corner by Chicken Goop. Finally, Patience pays off to a certain degree. He's going to get a second one. Toy's trying to make the best of a bad situation. He's actually got this down to a 1v2, and he kind of has this one isolated, but now the Brooklyn players out in the open. They're leaping around with the night. That's actually could prove to be a bad thing is now this is a 1v1 down at 19 HP. It is Shroud trying to clutch one bullet left in the clip there for Toy, and he's hoping it to be a headshot, but no, he doesn't even get to fire it off as Shroud will just take him down and Cloud. Nine get to keep their rain going into the second half. Yeah, and that was a really, really cool pistol by them. Um, so they have Skadoodle, Smoke Flash, Flash, um, and then they smoke off the coop, I believe it was. I believe it is. And they flash Stewie out, who goes directly to the right. Um, most likely he's not going to get killed there unless somebody hits just an insane shot from Statue, but you know, they should be blind. Um, and then he goes to the right, and then they time it so that Skadoodle throws another flash when they're coming out from drop to flash anyone around the rock. And it should be clarified once again, guys, with the scoreboard that things are uh, things are bugged with the uh, with the ESCA servers. So when you do start the second half, things like reset a bunch. So a majority of those scores are incorrect, as you can see. It's either the deaths or the kills for whatever reason that don't seem to get reset. But anyway, Cloud9 pushing their way quickly out onto the bomb site. Little Man actually does get a nice response to that one, but still, ultimately, the players from Russia are getting pushed back here, trying to trade out some more kills. Automatic actually does push it a little bit too forward here, and the room is being restricted. But Skudu with that kill, no, not yet. Very Curtis trading again, nothing picking up the last two kills, however, it does allow Cloud9 to pick up that round. And thankfully, because they are so far ahead, the fact that they lose three players is not really going to be that big of a deal here, so long as they can quickly close out the first gun round coming up after this one. And actually, no, no they're, they're going to buy they, here. They saved the round before, and they got three kills, which is pretty exceptional um, for having majority USPs and, you know, $900 or so invested. So they decide to buy. They have two Mag-7s, two Umps, and an M4, so it's not a bad buy. Um, comparatively to, you know, Cloud9, they only have three AKs and Ump and a Galil, which is the worst gun ever. Yep. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> According to me, at least. Yeah. UMP, obviously, uh, much better. I would much rather have a UMP. I would. I'd much rather have a UMP, a Smoke Flash, and an A. What, what don't you like about the Galil? The Galil? I just think the fire rate's terrible. You, It's really tough to, like, run and gun with it. Usually you just have to, like, crouch and spray, generally. The spray really, really easy, though. What's up? The spray pattern is really easy. Yeah, but you're so you're also really slow with it. Um, you don't one head. You don't one shot headshot. So, you know, it's just I, I just think it's a terrible gun. I'd much rather have the the ump and the utility, in my opinion. Well, Rush, again, they have ignored the standard procedure here so that they can try to play for the win if they can upset in this round. But unfortunately, first kill of the round goes to Stewie. He's able to pick that one up. Automatic swinging out, but here's Blade. One, two kills now with the shotgun, aiming for a third, and he's going to get it, but it's not the initial target he was looking for. Skadoodle is pushed back, and it seems like this gambit may have worked out. Virtus is now going to swing back in. That kills Stewie on the flank by the drop position, and now it's down to Skadoodle in a 1v3. But he's not out of this one just yet either. He knows there's one hiding in the corner, and he's got two players very low. Virtus is at 4 HP. Blade not much better off at 13. There's the first kill. The highest target is sitting up here. He gets that headshot, but Virtus peeks in just in time and is able to close things down for Rush. Yeah, that Mag 7 man is just so deadly when it's holding these close angles. Um, then no pop flash really comes out from Cloud9. That's, that's a common spot that you usually do see flash. 
Um, doesn't come out. I think he had a teammate kind of, you know, facing for him so that they took he took contact first, if I'm not mistaken. And Blake comes up huge, you know, puts Cloud9 on a force buy with just, you know, a couple tech nines, an AK and an ump. Um, so difficult round for Cloud9 to win here. It looks like they're going to go towards B and probably do something quick, you know, maybe based off like a quick execute and pop flash. And we'll see the difference in how they take it versus how we saw Rush take it. And we'll see if they do the same thing. It looks like they're going to throw nades, then pop flash, which is what I was trying to say that Rush should do earlier in their half. And Rush, for the most part, seem ready for this type of a hit. They've gone for a four-man stack over to this site, leaving only Blade to defend down towards A. Cloud9, though, deploy the rest of their utility to smoke off the site. It's Poyo holding close, but oh, he's completely blind, and he gets a headshot on a Stewie. Nicely found there, but unfortunately, he'll still be blind after that, and now he'll be traded out. Automatic finding another kill. Toy still trading Invernus, striking late from outside of the chicken coop. He dinks, I believe, Skadoodle down to 12 HP, and they are still proceeding to shut this one down. Skadoodle now has to try and clutch with 12 HP. Not really going to be possible there so blade will pick up the final kill and rush will go up to five yeah and their their take got a little bit disjointed i think they took a little bit too long of you know after they threw the nades when, when they got out but you see how when you kind of set yourself up to success post that first you know execution all these nades give them a lot of room after these like initial frags to actually do something i know they lost the round but that's kind of what you want to do when you have the utility you definitely do want to use it um and you see that's why they opt for things like that as they go into a save. So that kind of post-secondary nature is something that, that really separates some teams. And I think uh, that's something that Rush, when they go back, they can learn from. They could say, hey, look at how Cloud9, they basically had the same strategy as us. They just performed it a little bit different and gave themselves a little bit better of a chance to win the round, even though they didn't blue, but still. Cloud9 are going to be sneaking their way over here into suicide now. Blade actually was almost caught off guard for a moment there, but he's able to fall back. The nade he tosses in, though, is a complete miss, unfortunately. They were all stacked up, so if he bounced it a little bit better, it could have the massive damage, as only Automatic is even sitting on armor right now. But they do all just resolve to fall back into the B halls inside of the castle right now and are probably going to proceed out onto this site. Rush, your fairly standard stack here, but it's Poyo that's gotten aggressive, and that's where he's actually going to meet his end. Stewie finds them on tap to be able to take down Poyo to take him out. Now we just wait and see if they do decide to go in here. Rush is not reacting to that too heavily just yet. They're still keeping it an even split 2-2 across the map. But now there's pressure and drop, and they may be given reason in a moment here to rotate. Maybe not, as they do find that kill on nothing. Everything remains quiet with all reality, but finally, we do start to see the dynamic shift over there for the CTs. More of them rotating in. The Molotov gets dropped, but Skadoodle, while leaping down, finds Little Man here, and Shroud jumping back out, but it's Toy on this flank that moves in there, and he's going to put a big stop to this one. Him and Blade all shut it down, and Rush do manage to recover that round. Yeah, big flank by Toy there. That was really impressive of him. Um, that, that lurk by nothing kind of, you know, as soon as he died, they actually rotated more towards B. So... He kind of wasn't able to do much. Stewie just made a beautiful deagle shot right there. Um, but if Jordan maybe timed that a little bit differently, maybe either went a little bit later. Um, as you saw, it was really disjointed, right? As soon as nothing made presence, he died. Then five, six seconds later, Cloud9 hit the site. But those players, they actually started leaning towards B. So Cloud9 again putting the pressure for the most part. And your standard opener here, as most of these players are just going to proceed into the B halls, not really go aggressing towards either side just yet, hoping to catch some players that move up those steps and put their own position behind the box or inside of that CT cubby if they can. But Rush will not take any of those risks either. They're all sitting back and they're waiting for the play to come in from C9. They want to let them make the first move here and then try to react towards that. Yeah, and a, a very standard, pretty much a default by Cloud9 right now. They're gonna opt for some type of a drop control. It looks like toy. That was a very, that was a really dangerous peak. Um, I wouldn't advise towards that. If that automatic been posted, he probably would have gotten the kill. Or you know maybe if he just you know was pre-firing and out, pretty ad advantageous for the T's. But they do have drop control, and automatic gets in a really good position here. Um, so it looks like they'll probably take B. They will be able to get a pop flash out outside, but Little Man nicely played. He's recovering this, and now up to three kills in this drop position. Perfectly played by him, and that's essentially killed it now. These last two are going to try to push out towards Broken Wall, but Mother Flashbang is going to hit him. Skadoodle only gets that one singular frag, and Little Man chimes in after finding that 3k towards drop. He adds one more to his counter to make this one a 4k on this round. Rush, well, they're halfway there. It's still a long road to go, but for now, they're stepping the tides against Cloud9. Oh yeah, definitely still a long road to go. Cloud9 is going to offer a, a half armor buy. 
I believe, with, with a small amount of utility, they'll still be able to buy the next round. But Lil Man comes up big there, Blue. Um, three initial kills and drop. That's a, that's a position you generally are able to trade on, on, on T-side as well. So he comes up big. They offer a quick B split, it looks like, from drop. Automatic rushing down with the Tech 9. Gets killed, and now Lil Man does get traded as a splitting drop from drop from the B. Well, Julio, nicely done to hold that off for as long as he does, but still, ultimately, he's going to go down. The pistol's just a little bit too hard to manage, and Cloud9, while well, they're swinging this through, all of a sudden, it's a 2v3 against their favor. The bomb's going down. Spadoodle is stuck here behind the statue currently. Another teammate's going to need to move in here to try to bail him out, but Toy's going to try to prevent that to swing around. Unfortunately, it's not going to be him getting the kill there, although that would have been very impressive. Blade steals it away, and now Stewie looking to clutch in the 1v2, keeping close eyes on the bomb, watching the flank. Now, too, as he spotted that kill, one for him, the player moves back, and, well, we're going to see the the clutch spread come out, but it's not going to be the clutch as Blade does take him out and enable for Rush to pick up their eighth. Yeah, two things that, that I want to take notice from that round blue. If you notice, every single time Cloud9 comes out drop, they accompany it with, uh, I think it's Skadoodle that's flashing for them. I'm not 100%. But as soon as they come out drop towards B, they're flashing the rock every single time, and they're getting the better of that player. And then Blade, as soon as Sui spotted him, he repositioned. Stewie was not expecting that. He was expecting him to come you know, either not that quickly or maybe going more towards the block and going straight. Um, towards the broken wall, but he repositioned so quickly that it really caught Sui out guard. So that was a very impressive job by Blade there to have that quick thinking as soon as he saw him to relocate. Well, we will see the tactical pause, I believe, coming in from Cloud9 here now. As things are uh, showing a little bit of struggle here on the first map, just to close things out on T-Set again, remember, they started off with the pistol round victory and the, the uh, second round victory as well, and were able to immediately get up to 14. It's just that after that, this has been a straight run from Rush. I think it's five rounds in a row now. So Cloud9 needing to take a minute and figure out, okay, what can we do to just shut this down? As you know, we're only two rounds away, guys, but they are they are starting to close that gap a little bit here. So things are getting, be getting a little bit scary here now. Yeah, but eight to fourteen, and they're they're putting up a fight. And I think no matter what happens from this game, they're gonna you know be able to go back and look at a lot of positive things that they did, and also look back at some of the things that that they could definitely work on. Um, you know, especially when it comes to like their initial hits and things like that, and how they're executing. I think had they had a couple of Cloud Nine, you know, iterations of what they're doing, you know, with the flashes when you're actually coming out of drop room, very very helpful um, from the B players to support them, and then the secondary execution to give yourself a chance to win the round. Um, having said that, 8 to 14 now. I believe Cloud9 is on a buy, right, Blue? They should be on a buy coming off of that last round, yeah, because I think that last one was like a half buy, so they should be good here. And in all reality, again, only needing one or two to shut down Rush. Yeah, I mean, there's still Cloud9 is very, very favored here. Um, but having said that, Rush is getting a good amount of utility uh, in their buys now. You know, they're all going to have Molotovs, nades, and things of that nature. I think Russia's money is still in a pretty uh, pretty poor position currently, too. We can see the one player around 1,300. Yeah, they really only have Blade in a great spot at 5.5k, but the rest of these guys, uh, there's, there's a pretty consistent amount of them going down from round to round here. Cloud9 is always trading out two or three of these players. So they can never really build up an economy. So it's still Cloud9. They're going to immediately retake control of that and have Rush on some semblance of a force buy as soon as they do pick up the one round, unless there is a shift in the dynamic here uh, for Rush to just suddenly start shutting down the offensives from Cloud9. Virtus will try to get aggressive this time, but a little bit early on that shot and he's just going to promptly fall back. Yeah, and it's it's going to be tough for them to buy up if they lose around. They're pretty much going to be, you know, all full eco except for one guy that will either drop or, you know, have an op. Um, but, I mean, if you lose one round and you go down 8 to 15 anyways, are you really going to, you know, probably it's going to be very tough for you to win like seven in a row, right? So you kind of just want to buy out every single round. And as long as they do keep, you know, winning with like two alive, they're probably going to have a good amount of Molotovs and whatnot. But but they are getting to the point where Cloud9 is going to be able to half buy on every single other round. So it could just keep their economy very low no matter what. Well, we do have the drop play coming in, but it's going to be an A split. And oh my goodness, Rush, we're not expecting this one at all. It goes so well. And it's not only this too, but look at how aggressive Automatic is being. He swings out, gets himself a second kill. He's low now, so we'll have to pull back. But Virtus, the only player on this site, is going to get one. And he'll be done directly after that from the ramp position. The rest of Cloud9, while well, they've fallen back, and Automatic is even still trying to spot for players rotating in. A quick adjustment from the Rush side is going to send Polio wrapping out around the mid-connector instead of going directly up to the wall there. And Little Man, well, he's posting back. I don't even think they're actually going to attempt for this retake. They're just going to sit back and try to save these guns and kill as many C9 players as possible on the exit. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think they should try to kill any exits. I think they just need to save the, the guns. You know, you could still make it manageable on CT side Cabo if you just have, you know, three, four M4s or whatever and like a, uh, 
you know, Mag 7. They could still pretty much get a full buy if they save these two. Um, because the, both these players, actually, I don't even know if they'll be able to drop. I, I know one of their players has like 5,500, but. He's going to buy for himself. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be a tough buy for them on this last round. And luckily for Boyo, he gets the better of Shroud there. So he'll take him down at the very least, and they do accomplish the goal of doing that damage. But now they're up against the edge here, and I think it was like eight rounds straight they need to win, and that's only going to take it to overtime too. And I think I've still one more map to come up here as well, as we do do the two separate best of ones here in the league. So there's still one more map to go between these two teams. So we'll see what Rush still have to hold on to. As they do force into it, we can see what exactly the buy is, and it's not the end of the world. Three M4s, one UMP, and the shotgun for Toy is still a very capable gun to work with on this map. Spreading it out, it looks like it's going to be a four-man stack on B, while only keeping Blade with Watch on A. Yeah, and, and you know, one thing is that the Ops have not been very impactful that for impactful this game for either team, Blue. And we have not seen many Op kills come out of Virtus and Skadoodle. Um, a couple more from Ska than Virtus, but he's been having a tough one for, you know, the Opera on Rush. Not making much of an impact. Well, nine still keep it quiet though, with the exception of the uh, the reapplied smoke here and there to try and keep back the members of Rush from getting too aggressive here. And they still spray into this one as well, but nothing has really been revealed in terms of a strategy just yet. They are spreading their players across the map, keeping a majority of them outside of A long in the mid connector right now. You can see that three stack over there on the top left of the mini map, but the other two, they may actually just try for this pinch again. This is the same type of setup. They're moving in towards it. Automatic again, going out the same path, but he doesn't check the doorway. So Virtus will get the advantage here. Shroud, thankfully, is the second player to support in there. So he'll catch the trade, but Toy comes in on his flank and takes him down. Now the rest, they do try for this A pinch, but Rush, thankfully, they've been able to counter out the drop portion of it, so they're going to be fast on the rotate here. They get up to the site before the members of Claw9 are really even pushing out through the alleyway just yet. So Toy, thankfully for the guys on C9, they will have a Molotov to force him outside of the balcony. He'll be down below, but he's got a headshot angle against two of these players. Everything falls to Skadoodle now, and he's in a 1v4. So Rush's decision to save and have the extra gun power here has worked out brilliantly as Cloud9 fail on the push, and it's going to be Rush to pick up a ninth. Yeah, and Blade was very, very patient there, and him waiting was one of the reasons they were able to pick up that round blue. See, he, he was in the A site, and he didn't panic. He didn't start peeking when they were coming up. He knew he had a teammate heaven, so he waited until the guy heaven made contact. And every time you do that, if you have a teammate make contact and then you swing out, the T is just, it's its almost impossible for yourself to like be hitting a site and someone's, one of your teammates starts getting shot at and you do not look to like help them, right? So almost every single time, if you wait for this contact, you're gonna see blade peaks from there. Look at that camera work. Blue. That's DJ and Heather. That was perfect. Heather, of course. That was perfect. They illustrated my point perfectly. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so once again, I said to our observers, and now we go into what is going to be another, uh, what is going to be another map point here for the guys on C9. But it is forced up this time around. Skadoodle does manage to save the op, of course, carrying that one back. Uh, the two AKs go to Stewie and Automatic, and Shroud and Nothing are just going to be working with Tech Nines here now as both of them are all grouped up. They apply some pressure, just a couple nades in all reality, being tossed onto the B-bomb site, and are quickly going to fall back and regroup with the other group uh, sitting on the outside now, just out of uh, mid-connector and over here towards long A, where it looks like they may just go for a direct push here, not even really choosing to mess around with drop this time, since it was countered out after they tried to do the drop split in the last two rounds. Yeah, and I'm not sure who's lurking for Cloud9. Um... They might, you know, be changing up their roles and be in a bit of a transitionary period. Sometimes we see automatic lurk. Sometimes we see Stewie lurk. Um, as, you know, automatic looks like he's going to try to get down drop or at least fake it. So he fakes the drop control. That kind of brings that A player over towards drop. You see there's only one A player deep in the site right now. So he's going to have a tall task ahead uh, to hold off this Cloud9 push. So Cloud9 now are actually being given a whole lot of free reign over this. Instead, are going to play the active... Defense when it comes to the site itself. Toy's already started to rotate back up, but they're paying attention. You can see to the split this time, since they have been fond of doing it. Toy just spraying in there, getting some decent damage out of the shroud and nothing, but no kills this time. They're allowed to cross for free. Stewie is even going to pick up the kill against Blade on the site, and oh, automatic goes inside of the shed and immediately kills two. He's swinging out for another. Toy is still looking for his first kill. He's been hanging out of this door for the last 30 seconds or so, but he cannot get anything, and now it falls to Pollo. 1v5. If he can clutch this out, it would be an absolute miracle, but it's not meant to be. Automatic. It's a nice 4K to close out map number one here, and they will take it. 16 to 9 is going to be the final score there, and Cloud9 get to start their season off 1 and 0. Unfortunately for Rush, they'll have to go 0 and 1, but uh, certainly way more rounds than I was expecting them to pick up against Cloud9. Yeah, it was it was really rough on that on that first CT side, but I think we saw Cloud9 
just a couple steps ahead, a couple steps ahead in almost every scenario and aspect of the game blue when it comes to how they initially set up the rounds, how they pulled off the rotation off that last round. You see Automatic did a really good job of feigning drop control, was even able to group up with his team and still just hit against one guy at A, right? And we saw like when Cloud9 was on CT side in those situations, you know, one of them would take initiative, Stewie would peek up or B or something to get that info, to give that info to his team so they could be set up properly. Um, a lot of situations where Cloud9 was just, you know, a step ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And off of that, of course, we are going to send things back over to our analysis desk, ladies and gentlemen. So, Stunna, take it away. Take it away, Will, but not nearly as far as Cloud9 did right there. Off to a great start. They were able to just really set the tone early on. Uh, we did see a little bite back there by Team Rush. Uh, Bach, kind of walk us through it. I mean, in general, we, we knew that that was going to be the outcome. We, we knew that Cloud9 was likely going to walk away with that game. It seemed obvious from the start. I actually looked through my notes and I said 16-8. So I, I, I did give them more of a fighting chance on this map. Just looking through their history, uh, I'd say that this map is a little bit better of a map for the likes of Rush. And they did come alive in that second half. Uh, a much different team than we saw in the first half. But even still, I mean, what is there to say? The consistent play from Automatic was just absolutely unreal. Let's look at uh, our first replay here. It's going to be round four. If, uh, Buck, kind of, you know, what, what actually transpired round four? So this was what looked like it could be the beginning of several rounds coming in for Rush. This was the first buy round that we saw coming in for Rush. So they took the first buy round after dropping that uh, the uh, pistol and the ensuing anti-egos. It wasn't even strong anti-egos, and it really was all on the back of Poyo. So they set up a nice flash here. Poyo's the one to actually throw it. Lil Man peeks first, and the kills start piling up for the likes of Rush. Poyo comes around the corner. He doesn't get that one, but he's going to find one more. And then eventually he worked his way uh, towards the vents and got the, uh, a third kill in the round as well. Uh, I mean, that was... Kind of the only way that Rush was getting rounds early on was one player had to do a lot. Um, but the same could be said for Cloud9. Like, while we saw that every once in a while from the likes of Rush, we saw it way more often from Cloud9. No, absolutely. And we did know that they were going to be the more dominant team coming in here. I mean, these guys are obviously your, your household names in North America. These guys are the, the shooters. Uh, and, but, but there is the off chance that, you know, like a team like Rush could come out and really surprise. Not only is it the first match of the season, it's also, uh, it, you never know. Like, what have these guys been doing in their off time, right? Yeah, well, like I would said, in the off season, they came in, like, really fired up and really motivated. Uh, we watched them play at Mountain Dew League Land. They looked the opposite of motivated. Uh, watching them play, it was really just kind of uninspired. They seemed like they just lacked general energy. And then after they beat Splice in their relegation match, they were fired up and they were more motivated than they ever had been in their lives. And it showed here. They actually put in a pretty good performance on the first map. Well, speaking of performances, let's look at a round here where Young Stu goes off completely. Round six. Yeah, so at this point, Rush, they win that first buy round. They lose immediately after. But they're coming into this one. They've got all of their money stacked up. They've got the off in play. And things were looking okay off the start. I mean, Little Man kind of gets uh, like sewn into a corner here in the drop room. He's hiding in the smoke after the Molly dropped him down very low on HP. And he keeps automatic glued to the door, which was actually rather important. Probably could have gotten that kill, but it ultimately it pulled all the other people away from the broken wall. So Stewie was here alone. And then he just pops out. Yeah. And he does Stewie things. Just unreal from Stewie in the end. That spray knocking down everyone from the likes of Rush. I mean, we watch Stewie play all the time, right? Streams, he's always in rank S. I mean, he totally immerses himself in the game. How beneficial is that for a player? Well, I mean, we've seen other players who don't. Like, they just kind of rely on their mechanical skill, and they don't necessarily focus on some of the larger aspects of the game. So I think that's why Stewie has pushed to the top, whereas some of the other players, you know, yeah, they're good they're, and respectable for their talent. But if they put that extra effort in, they would be on a completely different level. But as, as great as Stewie was, I mean, the, the all-star for me is Automatic. Automatic, I think, had like two 4Ks, a 3K, maybe even two 3Ks. I, I didn't see the total kill chart for him. But again, another strong performance from him and a now string of strong performances for Cloud9. Well, I mean, absolutely. Uh, we're going to go into another map here of this double header, um, and it's going to be Cash. So we're going to come back after a break. Uh, but I still think you guys should go watch John Wick 2 this Thursday. If you haven't heard me say it enough, you're going to hear it one more time. Go watch John Wick 2 this Thursday. is the release day. Meet me in the movie theater. I think Bach wants to go with you guys. I might. Uh, but we'll be right back after this commercial.